again how God created it by hand from mighty mountains to the raging sea to every leaf on every single tree it's in the holy book just open up and take a look In the beginning, there was God. The earth was empty and dark. God looked over the surface of the world. It was time for something to happen. Let there be light. And the earth became light. I shall call the light day and the darkness night. And so there had been darkness and then light. And that was the world's very first day. Now, God was just getting started. The next thing to do was to make the sky above the world and to fill the sky with clouds. And that was the second day of the world. On the third day, God separated the water from the dry land. God made all kinds of things to put on the land. There were rocks and mountains, valleys, deserts, and beaches. There were big islands and little islands. There were oceans and seas, rivers and lakes. But there was still more to come on the third day because God wasn't done yet. It was time to make all the plants. God made tall trees and short bushes, vines, ferns, leaves and flowers. God gave all the flowers a different size, color, shape, and smell. And all the grasses and plants and trees that make seeds and fruits were made on the third day too. On the fourth day, God made a brilliant light in the sky called the sun to light up the day. And a silvery one called the moon to add some light to the nighttime. And as a special touch, God added billions of twinkling stars to the night. On the fifth day, God made some creatures to live in this beautiful world. There were birds, and more birds.
and more birds. And in the rivers and oceans and seas and lakes, God made fish. And the oceans were full of all sorts of amazing creatures. Still a lot more for God to do. On the sixth day, it was time to make the rest of the animals. There were so many animals to make. animals, and small animals. There were spotted animals. and horned animals. God's animals was beautiful. Now, on this sixth day, God did something else that was very important. God created the first man. And that man was called Adam. Then God blew the breath of life right into Adam. Where am I? Welcome to the world, Adam. Who are you? I am God. Look around you. All the plants of the earth and all their seeds and all their fruits, I give them to you. And all the animals, you have power over them as well. Everything is yours to use, to care for, and protect. Mm. Sit. Uh, uh, sit, please. <coughs> <laughs> God looked over everything and was happy, and on the seventh day, God rested. Ah, it is very good. <laughs> Now, God wanted Adam to live in the most wonderful place that could ever be. So God planted a beautiful garden for Adam to live in. 
It was called the Garden of Eden. God made a great river run through the garden, and then the river split into four great rivers. Adam had all the animals for company in the garden. <laughs> well, uh, uh, excuse me. Adam's first job was to name all the animals. This new request from God sounds like it's quite a job. I'm going to be as busy as a, a bee. I've got to search my brain and come up with a name for every living, breathing thing I see. You with the large brown spots Eating from treetops, your neck is the biggest part of you. Twisting round so easily, I believe your name will be Stretchy. Now that's pretty catchy. Or perhaps Giraffe will do. The jungle must be long to one so fierce and strong. I shiver and tremble at your growl. So you with the flowing mane, I give you the kingly name, Rory. No, that fits you poorly. Maybe lion is fine for now. Those flippy flappy things, I think I'll call them wings. And creatures they're attached to will be birds. The red breast will be robin, ostrich that big odd one. Parrot is the clawed one who repeats all my words. I'd say your fancy shell protects you very well, although it can slow you down a bit. So you with the scaly skin, I name you and all your kin. Pokey, not nah, too hokey. No, your wordle be turtle. Yeah, just right. The swimmers in the sea will mostly fishes be with whale and snail and lobster one and all the orange one is goldfish cod the ice cold fish tadpole has the bold wish of one day being thrall. the way you jump around you hardly touch the ground and scamper so fast you're just a blur so you with the cotton tail, you'll be known on every trail as Hopper. No, that's not proper. Oh, I have it, your rabbit, for sure. It's still early in the day, and I'm well on my way to naming every animal I know. Why, there's only half a million more to go. Looks like you've got a dear friend. I'd like to have a friend, too. <sighs> there were many animals to name. Adam grew very tired of trying to decide what to call each one. Now, God looked down on Adam sleeping there in the garden and Adam looked very alone. Hmm. And God decided that Adam needed a companion, someone to be with. God decided it was time to make another person. So God created woman. <coughs> what? Hello. Uh, hello. 
I mean, uh, hi. I, I mean, ah, uh, shucks. Where am I? You're in God's garden, the Garden of Eden. It's really nice here. You'll see. These are my friends. This is Monkey, and this is Dog, and this is um. I haven't named you yet, have I? Gee, I guess you need a name too, don't you? How do you like Eve? Oh, it's lovely. Eve, I like it. And I like this place. Me too. You see, God made this garden for me. I mean, us, to live in. And everything's pretty, and you can eat anything you want, and... Not quite. Who was that? That was God. Oh. God's the one who made us. There is one fruit in all the garden that you may not eat. There is? This is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You may eat of anything else in the garden, but you may not eat the fruit from this tree. Okay, tree of knowledge of good and evil. No eating. Absolutely no eating. Right. Anything else in the garden is okay, but not that tree. Definitely not that tree. Right. And so Adam and Eve lived very happily in the Garden of Eden, until one day. I'm so happy, life's a breeze, picking fruit from off the trees. La 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 la. Howdy. Oh, you startled me. Hello. What are you called? Why, I'm a serpent. Nice to meet ya. <laughs> nice to meet you, too. Nice day, isn't it? A very nice day. Nice tree, isn't it? A very nice tree. Nice fruit. Uh, um, I, I have to go now. No, you don't. We're just getting to know each other. You don't want to hurt my feelings, do you? Uh, no. Good, because I want us to be very good friends. Now, as I was saying, it's nice fruit, isn't it? You can eat it, you know. Eat what? You know what I'm talking about. The fruit of this tree. You can eat it. <laughs> the fruit of this tree? No, I can't eat that. Sure you can. It's easy. It tastes great. <laughs> We're not allowed to eat that. God said so. God said we'd be in big trouble if we ate that fruit. Nah, you won't be in trouble. God just doesn't want you to eat the fruit from this tree. Because if you eat it, you'll get smart. Like God. What's the matter? Are you a chicken? I'm not a chicken. Well then, why not give it a shot? Just one teeny tiny taste. <laughs> <laughs> 
God probably won't even notice. And this fruit, I'm telling you, is incredible. Um, no, I really can't. I'll never tell. Try it. Well, if it won't kill me, and it'll make me smart, maybe just one tiny taste. Sort of a lick, not even a bite, really. Oh, how bad could that be? Wow! Pretty good, huh? I've got to tell Adam about this. Adam! Adam! You'll never guess what just happened. What? You know the fruit? Which fruit? You know, the one we weren't supposed to eat. What about it? You didn't, did you? I did. Eve, how could you? Adam, it's great. I want you to try it too. That serpent over there told me all about it. I just took a little bite, that's all. But Eve will really get it if we eat that fruit. I didn't get it, did I? I, uh, I guess not. Just take a tiny bite. God's probably not even looking. Oh, go ahead. I don't know. It was good, but suddenly I feel kind of scared. I just feel so, I don't know, so sort of naked. Good grief! I'm naked! <gasps> Yikes! I'm naked too! <laughs> That's better. What were we thinking? Uh-oh. I think God's coming. I think we're in trouble. Big trouble. I think we're gonna get it now. We better hide. Uh-oh. Adam, Eve, what are you doing? We're, uh, hiding. Why? Well, we didn't want you to see us. We did a bad thing. We were scared. How did you know these things? Did you eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil? Well, yes, but it was her fault. She talked me into it. Uh, it wasn't my fault. That uh, serpent talked me into it. <laughs> I am not happy. You have disobeyed me. We're sorry. We're really sorry. I'm not worried. What can happen to me? You, serpent, will <gasps> crawl on your belly and eat dust forever. Ah, no! You will fear people, and people will fear you. This is your punishment for all time. And you, Adam and Eve, because I trusted you and you disobeyed me, you must leave the garden. Life was easy for you here. But it will not be easy outside. You will have to work hard and your children will have to work hard. You will know what it means to hurt and suffer pain. Here are some garments to keep you warm after you leave the garden. Now go. God put an angel with a flaming sword at the entrance to the garden. So Adam and Eve could never go back. But even though Adam and Eve had disobeyed God, even though they had to leave the garden, God still loved them. I'm sorry, Eve. I'm sorry too, Adam. I guess we're all alone now. <laughs> Not quite alone. And thus began Adam and Eve's new life outside the garden. From then on, their life was filled with joy and sadness, good things and bad. 
But even though they could never go back to the garden, God did not abandon Adam and Eve. God always watched over them, wherever they went, forever after. Created it by hand From mighty mountains To the raging sea To every leaf On every single tree It's in the holy book Just open up and take a look It's a story Many, many years ago in the land of Israel, the people were waiting for a very important event. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left. They heard the old story that one day God was going to send them a new king, a king who would protect them, bring them peace, and give the people more freedom. When is the new king going to come anyway? Our parents, our grandparents, our great-grandparents promised he would. They said he was coming. Yeah, but, but when? Even in King Herod's palace, people waited. Faster, faster! <laughs> when will that new and better king get here? What was that? <gasps> Nothing. No talking aloud. You will eat only bread and water for the next 30 days. No, 50 days. Oh. Old stale bread. Oh. And only four drops of water. No, make that three drops of water a day. <laughs> what are you looking at? <clears throat> then, one day in the town of Nazareth, a young woman named Mary had a most amazing visitor, an angel. <laughs> Who are you? Please don't be afraid, Mary. I am the angel Gabriel. I've come to bring good news. News? For me? God has chosen you from all the women of the world to be the mother of his son. God has chosen me? How can this be? Everything is possible with God. You will have a son. He will be the son of God. And you will call the baby Jesus. Whatever God wants, I will do. Oh. Mary loved a man named Joseph. One night, an angel came to Joseph in his dream. Joseph. God has great and wonderful plans for you and Mary. Mary is going to have God's son. He will be God's promised king. Give him the name of Jesus and take good care of Mary and the baby king when he comes. Mary, my Mary. God sent an angel to tell me about the child. I love you, Mary. I love you too, Joseph. Soon after, Mary and Joseph were married. It was right about at this time that Augustus Caesar, the emperor of the whole Roman Empire, wanted to count the people who lived under his ruling. 25, 26, 27. There are 
are 692 people from the town of Hebron and 839 from the town of Jericho. Add it to the list. 28, 29, 30. I'm getting tired. Send servants out to count all the people in my land. Everyone was ordered to go to their hometown so they could be counted. Joseph had to take Mary to Bethlehem, the town where he was from. Bethlehem was very far away. Excuse me, Shepherd. Do you know how far Bethlehem is? It's a long trip, 70 miles from here. Don't worry, Mary. I won't. I feel very safe with you, Joseph. For you see, Mary was expecting the new baby to arrive soon. Thank you, Shepherd. God be with you. And, and with, with you, you too. too. By day, they traveled many miles. We're more than halfway there. I'm sure we'll be there in no time. <laughs> Here, Mary. It's nice and cool. Thanks. I'm so thirsty. <laughs> At night, they slept in the open air. <laughs> The next afternoon, they saw a sign. Bethlehem was only three miles away. We're almost there. Soon we'll be in a comfortable room at the inn. There were many travelers in Bethlehem that night. Where can I get a good meal? Where's the inn? Where's a good place to stay? Good evening, kind man. Can you tell us how to get to the inn? Of course. Why not take the shortcut? Just go around this corner, then up the steep hill. You'll pass the granary, then go right, then left, then two rights, then your second left, then let's see. Right, left, right, left, and you're there. Thank you. You're welcome. Huh? Excuse me. Do you know where the inn is? Sure, it's right at the end of this street. It is? That's wonderful. Thank you, little girl. You're welcome. God be with you. And, and with, with you, you too. too. It was closer than we thought. We're here. Yes? Quit pushing. I'd like a room for my wife and myself. So would everyone. We have too many people here now. My husband keeps saying yes, yes, yes. Tonight, we'll have to sleep in the kitchen. But we've been traveling for days. What's going on here? They want a room. What else? Uh, I'm sorry. We really have no more space at all. My wife is very tired. We came from very far away. Yes, so have a lot of people. And my wife is expecting a baby. I'll tell you what I can do. We have a stable out back. It's full of animals, but at least you'll have a roof over your heads. It'll be warmer and safer than sleeping out in the open. Thank you. You're very kind. Come, I'll show you. You have some important company. <laughs> I hope you'll be comfortable here. It's the best I can do. Thank you. We're very grateful. Let's try and make the best of it.
During that night, a most wonderful thing happened. The baby was born, God's little son. We'll call the baby Jesus. Jesus. Mary and Joseph loved their new baby boy very much. I must wrap him to keep him warm and comfortable. The ox's feeding box. Jesus can sleep in here. And so the baby Jesus lay in a manger, surrounded by the warmth of love and the protection of God, who was now ready to let all of heaven spread the news of the baby's birth. That night, just outside the town of Bethlehem, shepherds were watching their sheep. How can you let your sheep walk around all night? He should be sleeping. My sheep? That one is yours. You make him go to sleep. I'm not going to walk way over there. You take care of him. No, you. No, you. Look, it's no big deal. You just have to be nice to him, that's all. What do you mean? Just tell him to go to sleep. Hey, sheep! Go to sleep! Come over here, little guy. It's time to sleep. Come here, this way. Greetings. Don't be afraid, shepherds. I bring good news of great joy. Tonight, a most wondrous thing has happened. Here in Bethlehem, the Son of God was born. He is Christ the Lord, the King that comes from God. His name is Jesus, and he is wrapped snugly in a manger. A manger? You can go see him right now. It is the happiest time of the world. Whoa! Wow. Ow! A king in a manger? Right here in Bethlehem? I always thought he'd be in a palace. Let's go into town and see what the angel's talking about. Let's go into town and see what the angel is talking about. I just said that. Then let's go. Whoa! Whoa. This way. Hey, where are you going? Get back with the other sheep. Didn't I tell you to go back? All right, but you'd better behave. Sheep. The angel was right. Look. He's really there. Hello there. What brings you here? We came to see the baby sent from God. We know about him because an angel came and told us. Then many angels came and sang about God's glory and peace on earth. The angel said he'd be wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Just like this. It's true. What the angel said is true. The Son of God, the King in a manger. Mary's heart filled with wonder as the shepherds told their story. She knew that her newborn child was the Son of God. Meanwhile, in the far distant lands of the East, wise men who study the stars saw something new in the sky. I beg your pardon. Not at all. It was entirely my fault. Uh, no, it was me, really. I wasn't looking where I was going. 
I was noticing that star. But so was I. What a coincidence. I was too. I study the stars. But so do I. And so do I. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. I am from the Far East. Ah. I am from the Near East. I am from the Mid East. Have you ever been to the furthest east? Yoo-hoo! Wise men! <laughs> Down here! <laughs> you fellas wouldn't by any chance happen to know where that big fat star came from. This was just what we were wondering. We've never seen that star before. It's a completely new star. Unless... Unless... The star is a sign from God. Of course! Oh, my! A sign, a sign from God? From God? Wow. That has to be it. The star is a sign from God? <laughs> yes, I see. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> what are you talking about? You see, it is said that a new and bright star would be seen in the sky when the new king is born. Really? But there it is, the new and bright star. It's also said that if we follow that star, it'll lead us to the new king. A new king! He's come at last! The star is a sign! So, are you going to follow it? Absolutely. Positively. Certainly. As long as it takes, no matter how far, guiding us on to the child, the chosen one. Starlight, star bright, glimmer of hope, glorious sight, shine on, shine on into the night. Lead us to our dream, the newborn king. Oh, yeah. What will we see? A palace of gold, royalty. Maybe he'll shine just like the star. wise men and bring us the news so the wise men traveled far from the east they kept following the star never taking their eyes off it not knowing where it would lead them look the star is over Israel we should go to the king's palace in Jerusalem the newborn king must be there Please forgive me, Your Majesty. I am so sorry to wake you, but the most unusual thing has happened. Tell me what it is already, and it better be good or I'll have you locked up. 
Yes, of course, Your Majesty. It's just that there are wise men visiting from the East. Yes, yes, and? Well, they say they have come to see the king. So, send them in. <laughs> they say they've come to see the newborn king. What are they talking about? Do they think I was born yesterday? Perhaps they were thinking there was another king. Another king? Absurd. Ridiculous. How can there be another king? And if there is someone pretending to be a king, I want to know where he is. He'll be sorry, I'll tell you that. Yes, Your Majesty, of course, Your Majesty. But what shall I tell the wise men from the East? Tell them to get lost. No. On second thought, get my advisors and hurry. Advisors! Advisors! Get in here! Yes, Your Majesty? What do you know about this newborn king? Oh, has he been born? Has who been born? The king. I am the king. We mean the other one. <laughs> what other one? The one you speak of. The one I speak of? I don't know anything about any king, except that everyone else seems to know about him. Why wasn't I told? Nobody tells me a thing. But we didn't know he was born yet. Who? The newborn king. <sighs> okay, if you're so smart, just where is this newborn king? The old stories say he will be born in Bethlehem. The stories say that, do they? That'll be all. Send these wise men in at once. Who told you to stop? Keep those fans going. And the rest of you, get back to work. Your Majesty, I present the wise men from the East. King Herod, we have come to meet the newborn king. And where did you hear of this king? We saw the star that God put in the sky. A star? From God? A beautiful star. A bright star. A sign from God. <laughs> we knew that if we followed the star, it would lead us to the new king. We want to worship him. This new king is not here. Then where is he? He's in Bethlehem. I mean, I'm not sure. I mean... Maybe you should go find him. Yes. See what I care. Go try and find him. And if you do find him, come and tell me where he is. I would like to worship the new king myself. Oh. Enough of that. When the wise men left the palace, they looked into the sky and saw the star once again. Look! There it is! On to Bethlehem! The wise men followed the star right into Bethlehem. Up this way! Come on, everyone! Come see the newborn king! And there, right above the manger, was the star. The wise men knew they had been guided to the right place. <gasps> We've traveled from distant lands to celebrate the newborn king. May we come in? Please. We knew the baby was born because of the star. We followed it all the way here. We have brought gifts. The wise men gave Jesus gold and sweet-smelling perfume and incense. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for letting us worship the king. We thank God for his great wisdom. He has sent us his son. <laughs> Praise be to God. Hooray for the new king! Praise, Praise.
praise be to God. Hooray for the new king. The wise men never did go back to King Herod to tell him the good news about baby Jesus. Everyone rejoiced and thanked God for sending them his son, the new king of the world.